Hello, my name is Christian from Trilola, Trading with Know-how and Transparency. Today we want to discuss what happened in the last week. I think many of you already know what happened with the two banks in the US who failed. Like the first one was Silvergate, a very crypto-friendly bank, um, but I think uh, it was already last uh, Wednesday. The big issue was Friday, Silicon Valley Bank, because it was um, since the financial crisis 2008 the second biggest bank uh, which uh, failed and today we want to discuss the details what exactly um, was the reason for this and maybe how you can use this uh, for your further investments if you don't want to miss any of these um, videos in the future subscribe here to our channel we would be happy and now we want to have a look here at the screen yeah we want to discuss the two banks first with silvergate Cap Corporation, where we see here the chart behind, and then Silicon Valley Bank. But just let's talk first about some issues, some numbers, uh, because I heard everywhere now the next bank crisis uh, will come. We are almost in the same position like in 2008. And uh, can there be a bank run also on my bank where I might lose my money and these are things or concerns what we need to talk about. I mean, nobody knows what will happen in the future and nobody knows if the information what we get from other banks are 100% truth or will there be more issues um, coming upcoming next. We will also talk later on um, on Credit Suisse where we had today some um, interesting news. So the whole situation is not so easy, but we have to yeah, look at it. Um, and the details what exactly happened and I think we should start here with um, Silvergate. The stock itself is still tradable as it's Silvergate Capital and only the Silvergate Bank was closed um, earlier last week. But first of all, what is important to understand that the market capitalization of Silvergate is really small comparing to Silicon Valley Bank, what we are talking later about it. So to compare this um, both, they are really on a different field. This is a regional bank. Silicon Valley Bank had much more money um, and like I said, also a quite big market capitalization. The first thing um, what we need to talk about, Silvergate delayed the quarterly earning result, what was um, already yeah, causing the first concerns and then um, to understand the business of um, Silvergate, I think this article is quite interesting. It was one of the biggest lenders to major crypto firms and it was um, doing transfers between exchanges and market makers. So it means if you closed your crypto trading account um, and you want to have your money back from the crypto exchange where you're trading on, they will do this transaction with Silvergate to get you yeah, your cash, your dollars, your euro back in your account. And if this happens all in a very short term, then it can cause some issues because not all the banks have so much um, cash in your account because most of the money is also invested in some other products, some other securities to gain some interest to make some profits. And this is exactly what happened here with Silvergate. And what was the reason for it? I think everyone remembers Sam Bankman-Fried arrested here um, for the big fraud with FTX. Also here we can see it was on the 11th of November. Now this uh, moment, this news caused of course that um, there are a lot of people um, closing their accounts. Not only maybe because cryptocurrency doesn't, didn't develop that well and price went a little bit um, down. So for example now in December um, Silvergate had a deposit of almost 13 billion dollars and this went down to 4 billion. So they had to um, borrow money, they had to sell assets and that's the main thing why everything went also so fast. Uh, they had to sell assets when were invested on a long-term perspective and especially in bonds or treasury bonds um, now with the rising um, interest rate by the Fed, they caused a lot of losses. So, um, and that's exactly what we saw over the last um, couple of weeks, and especially in the last um, 
um, in the last month, in January, it was over 8 billion withdrawn in only one month. And like I said, you only have, they didn't only have to sell their existing assets. They only have to borrow um, money from a bank in San Francisco, I think, for a short-term um, loan. And also this caused higher interest, what they had to pay it back. So in the end, to make it short, we know the end, um, Silvergate lost a lot of um, money and the price went down now to $2.30. It's still tradable, like I said, and uh, different to the next story, what we have now for the Silicon Valley Bank. We still can have a look here at the chart, but um, as the trading was halted in uh, on Friday after stock went down 60%. This is not tradable um, anymore. And this happened, I think, exactly on last um, Thursday, what we see here, 9th of um, March. And um, this week it was already not tradable anymore. Here it was a little bit different um, than Silvergate. Silvergate was yeah, very close, connected to cryptocurrencies. And as the market is volatile and we know cryptocurrency, yeah, there's still some issues maybe with also some customers uh, what can um, bring yeah, trouble to a bank what is connected to only crypto um, firms or mainly to crypto firms. Silicon Valley Bank was, um, first of all, downgraded by Moody's. And um, to start with the same information like with Silvergate, now you can see here the difference we are talking about market capitalization from 3.5 billion and here you can see what is the different difference between Silvergate and Silicon Valley Bank uh, Silicon Valley Bank um, here with the symbol SIVB it's much much more bigger and also had different um, um, customers so Moody's downgraded first of all uh, Silicon Valley Bank for this, it had to sell um, two um, more shares to um, potential investors. And that's already something what um, caused concerns. Mostly Silicon Valley Bank was working with um, venture capital and startup clients in Silicon Valley. And after they realized, okay, they need to bring more stocks to the market to get more money um, it was already something what started a small bank run a small panic and for example we can see it here comparing to the 8 million what we had in silly uh, in silvergate um, bank here with silicon valley bank it was 42 billion in one day the biggest bank run in one decade and um, that's exactly what happens if you work with a special um, industry if all their um, yeah, advisors or venture capital advisors for all the startups that like we have some concerns and better maybe get your money out of your bank then exactly this can happen here what happened to SVB Bank in, um, in the last weeks and Thursday the trading was holded and now um, they want to pay back all the deposits, at least what was in short. In short, with um, SVB is, I think, um, $250,000. Um, it sounds good for everyone who had up to $250,000 in the account. What um, was also mentioned on the weekend that they will get their money on Monday so far. Sounds good and um, yeah, I think very wise from the FDIC to um, announce this uh, very soon to also yeah calm down the panic a little bit. But if you see the numbers, ninety almost ninety six percent ninety six percent of the deposits are not insured because there are some foreign accounts and everything over this two hundred fifty thousand is not insured and you can. Assume, I told you in the beginning, startup clients from Silicon Valley, they will not have only 250,000 in their accounts. So um, that's here a big issue. What we have to look in 
um, a little bit closer. The good thing is there are still loans um, um, which SVB had and uh, which will be paid back and the FDIC will use hopefully these loans to also cover some of these um, losses so people should get um, hopefully soon their money back. So I think this is quite interesting. Also here we have already the next announcement that there will be um, Silicon Valley Bank sold to another bank most likely. So in some cases um, I think it should also operate maybe under another name um, in the future again. But to understand what um, happened in the whole industry after we saw these two charts here, we also can see some other regional banks like um, Pacific West Bank Corporation, where the trading was also almost halted. These are all regional banks. You might know, maybe if you're not living in the US, most of these banks you never heard before. Same here, the First Republic Bank, um, what was, it's also a regional bank from the US, and another bank, what is quite close connected to also crypto, Currencies is Signature Bank, and we see Signature Bank. It's um, yeah, also still holding the uh, trading since the tenth of uh, March. There's no more trading in this um, symbol. And um, what is interesting to see that's really regional banks. If we look at big banks like uh, J.P. Morgan, they have a quite yeah, bigger client base, not only in one specific area. And that's the question from the beginning. Can a bank run also happen to these um, banks? In theory, it can happen. But as this was really something what is connected here for cryptocurrencies with Silvergate and for um, Silicon Valley Bank with startup clients uh, from Silicon Valley, it was a different scenario. But if we now look a little bit closer, what happened after last week? We had today Credit Suisse. What happened with Credit Suisse? Credit Suisse had also some news. What I will show you here on the screen. And the biggest investor of um, Credit Suisse, what is... Um, Saudi Arabian bank said it can't invest more and then the here we see it the chairman of the Saudi National Bank said this um, early um, on Wednesday that it can't invest more than it, it moment uh, does so that was the news what already caused um, this drop today about in total I think one of the lowest prices um, in Credit Suisse since Yeah, since the last five or ten years, but we also have to see Credit Suisse had already big problems the last five quarters. They always reported uh, um, losses and also the Swiss National Bank already said if there's any problem with uh, liquidity, they will help out. But still, it's um, after we see two, let's say, regional banks in the US, we have now Credit Suisse. So I think the whole industry is um, nervous. There can be a panic also for some other banks outside of the US. And uh, we want to show you another good example for banks or brokers here, which are already recovering or people using low prices to um, buy new shares, new stocks, new positions in um, these um, banks, for example, here. Charles Schwab. We saw one of the only um, banks today with a big profit of um, 6%. It said it has no problems uh, with liquidity. It's really um, well prepared for um, different scenarios. So Charles Schwab is one of the examples. So it can be a good investment on the long term, but for everyone who is um, more or less a swing trader, I would um, yeah stay and wait a little bit what will happen in the next few weeks. Um, we saw same or um, similar things also in GP Morgan last week already. And here you can also compare how much JP Morgan went down comparing to 
yeah, the small uh, regional banks in the US, still Silicon Valley um, Bank, um, I didn't know if I said it at the beginning, was the second big failure in the US history of banks. So that's something what um, yeah might make a lot of, lot of people um, concerned. And especially here, we have another ETF in a chart. What I want to show you, it's um, the ETF for regional banks. And I think this shows where was the biggest losses. It is really small regional banks connected to certain customers like we had in these two examples. Yeah, I think it's quite interesting what was the reason for it and how you can use it and maybe also what can happen in the future, especially if we look back in 2008. And like I said in the beginning, if you don't want to miss any of these uh, videos in the future, make sure to subscribe to our channel, leave a like and a comment. We try to answer everything as fast as possible. So hope to see you soon and um, stay safe.